The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our Migrate to the Cloud with IMGS webinar. Uh, my name is Kieran Kirk. I'm the Operations Director with uh, IMGS, and with me is Aditya Adote, who is our pre-sales consultant. Good morning, Aditya. Hey, good morning, Kieran. Uh, it's, it's not morning where you are, though. You're you're on the other <laughs> side of the world, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. It's afternoon. Yes, is is lockdown lock is lockdown it's unlocking lockdown. in India? It's 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 pretty warm outside as well. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're, we're getting we're 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 getting two real heat here in Ireland. It's it's twenty degrees. We're all going to die, you know. Uh, yeah. We're not used to it. Uh, okay. So uh, good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining. Uh, so Ditty and myself are going to bring you through our. Uh, how to migrate to the cloud with IMGS and our and our cloud technology platform. So, um, first off, just to say, if you have any questions, you can log the questions in the question panel, and we, if we have time, we'll take them at the end of the webinar. Um, so this morning, we're going to give an overview of our cloud stack, and then uh, Aditi is going to do some migrations to show you how to get data from both on-premise and different uh, cloud formats into a cloud data warehouse. So what we're seeing in the market at the minute, first off, there is a data explosion, you know, 44 trillion gigabytes of data. Now, yesterday I was listening to the um, Talent uh, Connect conference that was on a virtual conference, and they talked about that everybody's data will double in size every two years. So just think about that, that your current data will double every two years. So that's, this growth in data is just huge, and it's outstripping what on-premise systems can do. And that's why we're seeing such a huge growth in public cloud spend, you know, up to 144, 1 billion in cloud spend. But also what we're seeing is people then with this are spending an awful lot of time preparing this data, so actually manipulating data, getting it ready, and getting it ready for reports, and that's a lot of lost time. You should be able to automate that. And also, we're now seeing a big move to real time. Again, just quoting from yesterday's Talent Connect conference, um, we heard from Lenovo, the PC makers, who have went from you know five, six years ago, data reports being generated every few weeks to now being instant, being able to generate any report or sales report to being able to do predictive sales, figuring out churn, figuring out what parts of the world are demanding which type of laptops. And, and when we heard about their size of data, terabytes of data, now all up in the cloud in both RDS and in, um, in Redshift. So it's just showing this adoption is happening worldwide and there's a change in the analytics market. People are expecting real-time analytics, not getting a dashboards either too late to make a decision or a week or two time, wanting the analytic, wanting the answer straight away. So why are organizations looking to move to the cloud? Well, a big thing we've seen in the last couple of months is accessibility. Being able to access systems anywhere at any time. You know, we've all had to change to a new paradigm. We're all working from home. So being able to access our systems, being able to access technology, without having to VPN or without having to go on-premise is becoming more and more important. Also, as I talked already about the data growth, scalability, cloud systems can easily scale up as your business and data grows. So we always use the example of, say, Facebook. When Facebook started at a few hundred users in a college, then it grew to a global company and now they've got data centers all over the world. But at the start, they could have grown the company very quickly by using cloud technology just increasing the Amazon or the Azure servers as their uh, demand grew. Another side of that is elasticity. So you may have peaks in demand or peaks in usage. So if it's in the gaming world, maybe chatting on weekend, gaming companies may, may have a peak in demand on chatting on weekend. So they need to fire up the system that weekend, but then take it down. Also, we've seen over the last few weeks, some systems like Teams, Skype, uh, WebEx, they've seen huge growth in demand for their usage, which may start dropping down now as people start returning to their offices. 
So this elasticity, being able to shrink and grow on demand and as needed is really, really important and something that cloud technologies handle really well. Naturally, with cloud, you get excellent failover and disaster recovery options. So and we've seen a lot of this with our blue light customers uh, around the world. Again, pre blue, things like police, fire, ambulance would have previously maybe had to have a separate co-location system, another, another data center set up in another part of the country that could be used if anything happened to the first site. But that's very challenging and very hard to maintain. These agencies are now seeing that the way to do proper 24-7 co-location disaster recovery is to use the cloud and also be able to have systems to follow the sun. So they're monitored, they're in different locations and they're always there. And naturally then, with cloud, you, we are seeing a big increase in IT and administration costs. So moving to infrastructure as a service, moving to SaaS, you know, software as a service. And I think that's where a lot of organizations put their first step. In IMGS, one of the first things we did in the cloud was Office 365. Very easy to use, remove the need for us having our own exchange servers, us having our own office machine set up, SharePoint, all that kind of stuff. We we're able to very easily adopt Office 365. It's always available. It's always on the latest version, and we just have an annual fee. Very easy, very predictable, very use, easy to use. And as you'll see this morning, some of our technologies we're providing are in that model as well. We also see organizations who just want infrastructure as a cost. So they don't want to buy servers. They want to be able to just get them through Azure or, or Amazon or Google. Or we're also seeing things like platform as a service, where you're getting the full solution where you can build and use. And again, that's where talent can kind of come in and some of the technologies we're showing today. What we're seeing is though as well is that we're now seeing a modern data pipeline. And some of the concepts we see there is the first thing that people are looking for is raw storage, being able to store files, being able to store data and having somewhere to put that data. Once you have it stored, you want to be able to have the power or the processing to be able to compute that data and do analysis and do something with it. And then, of course, once you've processed it, somebody needs to be able to consume the information. And they are the fundamentals of anybody, any data system. Storing the data, having the ability to store all your information, having the ability then to process it, no matter how big that data is, and then being able to consume it. And what we're then seeing is that when it's at the storage level, the information is just landed there. So in essence, just through it right there in a raw format. Then you're being able, and then being able to use that raw data, process it, and turn it into something that's curated and aggregated so that people can easily consume the information. We're also then seeing, once you start doing that, the people then want to be able to do data discovery. They want to know what information is where, and where do we have it, and what what do we know about the data? And of course, once you have all this data, you need to be assured that that information is secure, that it can be accessed by the right people at the right time. And that's where governance comes in. So we wanna make sure it's good quality data being accessed by the right people in the right way, and we don't have data breaches. And this is all done through a data journey, bringing you from just having the raw data to using your compute, to consuming it, and then to building these pipelines where you can ingest the data, bring it to the storage, process it, consume it, and then visualize it. And this morning, what Aditi is going to show is how we can go through this data pipeline. So no matter where you are on your data journey, whether it's bringing raw data to the cloud for the first time, or maybe you have your data in the cloud and you're now starting to look at data warehousing to do more advanced analytics. Or if you want to start looking at data governance and making sure you're adhering things like GDPR so that you know where your information is and you can provide that single source of truth. In IMGS, we provide the data intelligence platform and it, we have three main pillars of that platform. First off is talent and talent is our data management stack and that covers that whole data governance assurance piece of taking the data from raw data, ingesting it, transforming it and pumping it into things like data warehouses, data lakes, and now also bringing it to APIs so that people can consume this information in whatever format. With the move to the cloud, the first cloud data warehouse that has been developed is Snowflake, and is the, it is really starting to make huge waves in the market. 
Snowflake is the first data warehouse designed for the cloud. So it has all the basic cloud principles, elasticity, scalability, pay as you go, use as you need. And then when you have all your information, being able to visualize it and be able to, do, to generate insights is where SciSense comes in. Being able to generate these insights and do analytics and get value from all your data that you've consumed, ingested, and built up. So with Talent Data Fabric, we can deliver trusted data at speed. So we can collect the information, put in place governance, transform that data, and then share it. And what we're also seeing today with the changes in, the, in, in our lives in the last couple of months is there's a new digital reality. People are now going to change how they consume information. People are more likely to maybe go online and buy through a website than maybe go to a shop because they're scared to go out or aren't able to go out. The how people consume information, their new digital platforms, we're going to see an awful lot of organizations changing their digital strategy because they realize that customers are now going to be using online more. They're going to be using apps more. And this is going to change how we all use data and how our experiences change. With talent, we can do data integration and start anywhere. So Aditya is going to show with Stitch Data Loader this morning how we can ingest quickly and load data and replicate data from cloud native sources. So Aditya is going to show us how we can take in Google Docs data. Pipeline Designer is also Talent's lightweight data integration client for batch and streaming of data. And again, that's where we are moving towards that real time paradigm. We're not going to show that this morning, but if you are interested in seeing it, we do have a webinar on Pipeline Designer that Aditya and I worked on before uh, that you can see. It's on our website. And then finally, we have Talent Studio, which can provide really advanced data integration workflows to take data, infer and ensure data quality, and make sure that data is going from both on-premise and hybrid cloud, and making sure you can take your data from you know, landed, to data warehouse, to data mart, whatever you need to do, Talent Studio is the excellent tool for bringing you along that data journey. All of this runs on Talent Cloud, and the key advantages of Talent Cloud with all cloud systems is one, the failover and disaster recovery I mentioned already. Two, with Talent Cloud, it has full GitHub integration, so it, can, it supports the full software development lifecycle. But as well as that, because it now works, supports things like Kubernetes. We can, you can have a full CI, CD lifecycle where you can spin up your dev environments, orchestrate them, test, production, and handle all that through the cloud and as you need to do. And naturally, with any cloud system, automatic upgrades are, are handled uh, seamlessly for you. So Stitch Data Loader is an intuitive cloud-native data ingestion tool. Quickly enables analytics with data at your fingertips, and again, Aditya will show you how quick we can take data from source data into a data warehouse in Snowflake and then get SciSense to visualize that to generate insight. And then it's easily, easily able to automatically scale for seamless data movement. Stitch Data Loader supports hundreds of data sources like Google Analytics, Salesforce, PostgreSQL. Um, it has advanced configuration options so you can have it scheduled to come in as often as you need, or weekly, or monthly, or daily. And also, it has rapid replication of data warehouses. So Redshift, BigQuery, uh, and of course, Snowflake, which is our preferred platform we're going to show you this morning. Pipeline Designer allows you to build faster, easier, and smarter, and integrate all your data at speed, and innovate and scale efficiency. So it provides that live preview uh, capability. Also can do schema reading, so a schema on read, and it has the batch and streaming. It is nicely extensible with Python. A lot of people like to use Python. I think Aditya, that's your happiest place to be writing some Python. And the portability and the multi-cloud. So again, can run anywhere, which is really, really uh, smart. Doesn't matter what environment you're on, you can run the pipeline designer. And it's very easy to scale because it's part of data cloud or talent cloud. And finally, the talent data integration. Again, do more faster with trusted data. So it allows you to eliminate data silos, connect to any data source in any environment. We can embed data quality throughout and manage more data and jobs and scale easier. With talent integration, we have 2,000 connectors 
it generates non-proprietary code. So whether that's SQL in, in, in normal databases, Java, or Apache Spark, you know, for the for these uh, NoSQL kind of uh, Hadoop environments. And it has native integration with the latest technology and platforms, intuitive user interface with drag and drop tooling, and again, supports that developer lifecycle shared repository using GitHub to store the versions of the workbenches. And with that, with Talent, we have the ability for flexible deployment with Talent. So again, Aditya will show this in the demo, how we can connect to on-premise data behind the firewall. We can use still use Talent Cloud, leave that data on-premise, and connect to the hybrid cloud and take that information. And all of that is done through with secure deployment with Talent. So the regional data centers, we have them in Ireland. So again, at co-location, the residency is not an issue. And it's AWS SOC uh, and ISA E34000 certification. So again, very secure information. Briefly, I just want to touch on Snowflake. So Snowflake is the first data warehouse built for the cloud. It's a complete SQL database. So any of you SQL developers, you can write all the SQL commands you want. And it also requires zero management. And this is a big part of what Snowflake and, and the cloud approach, where if you have a databases or databases on premise, you'll need SQL DBAs and many of them, depending on the scale of your organization. With Snowflake, that SQL DBA piece is taken away from you. Snowflake provides all the infrastructure management and has inbuilt DBA database management tools. It can handle all of your data, whether that's um, non-structured or structured, and all of your users. So again, because it's cloud-based, your users can be anywhere. And they also have, they pay only for what you use. And then there's the ability to do live data sharing. So being able to share information without having to do ETL, without having to move it around. Now, Snowflake have taken that on to another level with Snowflake Data Marketplace, where Snowflake partners are now putting their data into Snowflake for other users to consume as a data as a service. So being able to consume that information. So now I think there's already 20 or 30 data sets up in the cloud Snowflake Data Marketplace where you can actually consume data. And again, you don't have to ETL the information out. So with the zero management, you can load the data and run the queries. Snowflake will do all the rest. Zero infrastructure and min costs, secure and highly available, fully managed, you don't have to do any database tuning, and no indexing, distribution keys, partitioning, or vacuum required. Big thing of Snowflake is pay for what you use. Scale up and down as you need, auto suspend and resume, and it's very comparably priced to Amazon S3. Again, mentioned already, it handles all of that structured and non-structured and semi-structured data, CSV, XML, uh, Avro, and you can query across these kind of data sets. And the live share has that ability to easy sharing of data to share the information. So with Snowflake, you get high performance, concurrency, so you can scale up, multiple groups can use the information, and it's simply, simple to use, fully managed to go application. And the final part of our data intelligence platform is SciSense, which empowers builders to deliver insights on complex data so users can achieve business outcomes. So SciSense Analytics comes in three products. The cloud data for teams, which was previously known as Periscope, for those kind of coders who want to be able to create analytics using code, running it through a cloud application, cloud data for teams is your product. If you're in, interested in embedding or white labeling analytics, we have SciSense for product teams. SciSense has always been an API first solution. So that means that organizations can very quickly embed and integrate the SciSense tools into their existing systems and white label them for their own marketing and monetizing of data purposes. And then finally, SciSense for BNI and analytics teams, which is the enterprise solution where you can do your analytics and do your information. And that's what we're going to show this morning. So with it, you can do interactive self-service dashboards and analytic apps to explore your data and take action. Also with SciSense, it's a modern cloud native architecture. So it has now been built on Linux so that it supports full DevOps agility. So you can use microservices, Docker, Kubernetes, however you want to run your developer 
orchestrate your integrate your, your workflows and your systems size and supports that naturally it's a reduced cut cost of ownership because it runs on Linux, it's highly efficient and scalable, and it's also optimized size sense for cloud data warehouses. So it works really well with Snowflake. So you can actually use size sense to improve the performance, to work in hand with Snowflake to improve your performance. So with it, it can actually um, build materialized views in Snowflake to speed up queries and lower the total cost of ownership. And finally, it's a flexible deployment. So very similar to Talent, public cloud, private cloud, on-premise, doesn't matter, SciSense can work wherever you need. So with SciSense, we can take data from anywhere and we can run it everywhere. So it can be run beyond the dashboards on desktop, mobile, and connected devices, and it can connect the information anywhere. In the high-performance databases like Snowflake, using web analytics, spreadsheets, on-prem databases, Hadoop, whatever you need to join. Now I've talked a lot, so I want to hand over to a DPA who's going to talk through this demonstration, which is the Adventure Works demonstration. This is just some sample data that Microsoft provide. But well, the journey we're going to show you today is Adventure Works are starting on their journey to the cloud. They have an on-premise SQL Server HR employee database, and their sales data is in Excel sheets on-premise. But like a lot of companies, they put their toe in the water into the cloud and are using Google Docs as a SaaS cloud app to store product data. But now they want to move to the cloud for a single source of truth and to drive sales analytics to help grow revenues. So that's well, I think this, this is the kind of example we're seeing with a lot of organizations. So I'm going to hand over to Aditya who's going to bring you through how AdventureWorks can go through this um, build our journey to the cloud. Thanks. So Thanks, Aditya. Kevin. I've made you a presenter. Okay. You should be able to share your screen. Okay. There we go. So, so let's let's basically jump on to our data journey. So, uh, from the example, what uh, the product team has uh, given us, you know, the data about product info. Uh, in two sheets in product and product category, and they are basically pretty tech savvy and uh, they use SaaS software. So they are they they have given us a spreadsheet link which has these two uh, two 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 informations you know uh, relating to product. So let's start and uh, you know uh, see if we can quickly get the data uh, into a Snowflake uh, basically uh, Snowflake stage snowflake warehouse so we are planning to use snowflake as our database uh, you know since our data is in uh, a google sheet or which is basically not in relational format so we uh, will just will basically start by you know uh, having to have those files into into tabular format so on snowflake you know creating databases and starting your work is uh, pretty straightforward and intuitive what I'm doing is I'm creating a products database. So this products database basically will store our files from Google Sheets. So if I could refresh it and you could see that we now have a products database created with two schemas. One is information schema and public schema. So that's basically the generic schemas that you get. Now to get the data into uh, into Snowflake from uh, Google Spreadsheet. What uh, we have is Talent Stitch. So using Stitch, you know, we could create an integration. We could join our sources and destination warehouse uh, in which we want to get the data. And uh, you know, as soon as we run the integration, we have uh, we'll have our data with all the schema uh, and destination. So uh, if you could see that uh, these are the sources basically that you could use uh, in as a part of your integration but since we have uh, data in google sheets as of now so let's select the google sheets as my integration plan let's give it a name so i'm giving product info the name of this integration so now this product info will appear as a schema in snowflake you could also change the schema name if you would like it asks for uh, spreadsheet ID 
so if i go back on my google spreadsheet what you are seeing here is is basically the spreadsheet id so let's pass on this parameter then uh, you know uh, what would you like like do we have to have historical data sync uh, so we say yes and that you know we want all the data that are there available since a year ago we want that as well we could select the replication frequency as to how many times a day we would want to you know run this integration so that we have the data uh, in destination let's make it 24 hours and for this run we'll be running it manually so that's all we have done as of now and we'll authorize it what it's doing is now it will make a uh, basically connection to the google spreadsheet it will find out the sheets that are there and the schema and basically you know it will then give us options uh, accordingly as to how many sheets or what data we want to kind of transfer or migrate or replicate into a uh, staging warehouse so you could see straight away now our sheets are linked we have got two uh, data uh, tables product category and product which are basically the sheets uh, data in the sheets that we have so let's select product that this is the table or the data that we want to replicate in the destination we'll select uh, you know columns that we want to replicate there are a few uh, few uh, few stage related columns as well basically that tracks uh, you know what rows has been uh, migrated and when uh, we'll just skip them for now now we have finalized one table to get into our destination we'll see i will just go back uh, to our integration and select one more table so remember that we have two sheets one is the product and the other one is product category so let's select this sheet as well and it has two columns basically category product category and product category id we'll finalize it and now our tables are ready basically we can now know which uh, we have configured which data from google sheets we want to uh, basically replicate and on the destination tab i have reconfigured my snowflake uh, warehouse and you could see that uh, the database that we are using is products a warehouse is basically computing resource uh, from snowflake that will be used to create the tables and i'll use the role as account admin so now basically our integration is ready and what we'll have to do is just to you know trigger it so it has been once your integration is prepared it automatically you know starts at certain times so for example our integration is created and it says then the extraction will begin at 11 28 so soon the extraction will basically begin now we'll go back to uh, i'll basically go back to my snowflake warehouse to the time the data is being loaded what i did was i uh, uh, i ran the same process yesterday and created uh, this, uh, this database uh, you know so what you are seeing is the product info schema which we defined in our uh, such data loader as integration name and these are the two tables which we now have uh, in snowflake so if i could show you the data that's we have got is you know the product name product category id and then the stitch specific rows so, so now what we have done is using stitch to a loader we've got the data from google spreadsheet straight into a snowflake staging schema we didn't basically created any uh, 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 you know blank tables created any schema we didn't define any data types basically stitch does it uh, for us so basically it saves a lot of time so now let's since we have the data in our snowflake stage what we could do is we could basically start analyzing it using sciSense. so on sciSense, i uh, i'm on my data tab and what i'm doing is i'm creating an elastic cube basically so let's create let's give it a name called ings products now this elastic cube is a database which will hold our data that's there in the snowflake uh, repository so i'll click on data there are different sources from uh, where you could get data uh, into sciSense. You could see right shift, uh, you know, Google BigQuery. So as of for now, we are using Snowflake. So I'll select 
a snowflake and I have already configured, uh, you know, my credentials and the schema that I want to uh, connect to using SciSense. And let's click next. And straight away, we could see that we have uh, got the uh, database and uh, that's a product database which basically uh, hosts our two tables, you know, uh, to data from Google Sheets, one is products and product category. Let's bring it in. And uh, quickly in SciSense, we could also mesh the data, uh, you know, so what I'm doing is, uh, doing here is I'm, I have my product category ID in product category table and the same ID exists in the product table. So I'm basically making a relationship so that uh, if I have to basically visualize the data in the two tables or perform an analysis joining those joining the data in those uh, tables i could do that so now what SciSense is doing is it's getting the data from snowflake it's creating a schema here and you know it's basically getting the data which then we could visualize it uh, using dashboards on the analytics page and I suppose what we've we've shown there with ETL, like it's very quickly we use Stitch, which was a a cloud ETL tool. So again, like literally, we didn't have to set up any software. We were able to connect to our Google Docs, uh, run it, populate into Snowflake again, cloud data warehouse without doing any transformation. So we were just doing a simple extract and load raw data into Snowflake into our staging database in Snowflake. And now with SciSense in the cloud we're able to very quickly get insights about our product information. So we're able to create a dashboard, connect to that raw data and do a mashup. And exactly. you, haven't had to, you haven't had to install one piece of software. Exactly, so, Karen, so, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, so let's, so, so you know, the spreadsheet was not clear. So let's, we want to, you know, just summarize what the data, uh, what the data are there in the uh, spreadsheet. So what we are seeing is that, Basically, it says that there are total 295 different products and that the company caters to. So we have created a widget, which is visualizing the, uh, you know, different uh, products that we have. Let's create another widget uh, to, you know, deep dive in, deep dive a bit as to what, uh, what product categories are and how many products belong to which category. So on advanced step, I could also basically select a visualization or Select a, uh, the select a widget that I want to use. So let's see what uh, data we could get into the pie chart. So in, in values, let's, from the same uh, product table, let's basically, you know, summarize all the products that we have. So as of now, uh, let me cut, show the values as well. So as of now, we have 295 products. And you want to see it across categories as to how many different categories we have. So from product category uh, table, uh, I will select the category name. So you could see that, you know, instantly, now we have started uh, to have visualization or analysis of the data uh, that we have in spreadsheet. So yes, Karen, I mean, instantly straight away, we got the data from Google spreadsheet and, uh, you know, we have uh, visualization and basically the analysis, you know, the, 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 the summary of, uh, as to what product team has provided us. So now yeah, we so have, the, that's, that's yeah. speed to insight. It's just, it, it's just been, you know, have, you know, 10%, whatever it is like, so, so quick to go from raw data to insight. We've taken away all that setup costs and take away all the infrastructure piece. And we can just get access to the information and give the analyst information straight away exactly so that's what we have done so we have ingested a raw data and we have visualized it and now we have the data in our snowflake stage so so using talent stitch uh and and everything we are doing is as of now is in cloud so now the next bit is that you know now we started to have our data in a repository or we can start building a warehouse based on the uh, based on the based on the journey we are following and where we are. So now the next bit is that, okay, now we have more data. And now the adventure works team are saying that we, we have more data we could give you, but that data is behind our firewall in our, uh, you know, on-prem systems. 
those data are in csv file and databases and now we'll see you know how using telling we could do that so what this slide is showing is that we have the data csv files uh, which holds the sales record and then uh, we have employee basically human resource data in in, in sql server database so using talent and remote engines uh, what we could do is we could get the data into stage as well so what we are seeing is that uh, following the requirement i have uh, created a plan and what this plan has is three steps one is to get the data from on-prem to snowflake stage the second step uh, basically the second step is you know to get the data which is in your snowflake stage now which is raw data to basically uh, you know transform or uh, curate into a bi schema or you know a bi layer which 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 would be summarized data and basically the data that you want to uh, visualize and then obviously there's also a third step which validates you know how the two jobs on prem to stage and stage to bi is basically performing as to is there any data discrepancy uh, while you know transferring the data from on prem system to snowflake stage and so on so let's see start with the first job which is move the data from on prem to snowflake stage so this is uh, a job that i created and i have pushed that job into talent management console and from talent management console you know we could orchestrate and schedule the job which could run and get the data into staging area so you could see that there are it it basically is reading different files from my uh, system there's a database that it's reading out and it's creating a stage table so for example this uh, if you could see this product stage step what it's doing is is getting the product category csv data into a adventure work stage basically snowflake stage table so since the job has pushed into a uh, cloud management console to run this job on premise uh, i have used remote engines creating a remote engine is uh, is basically easy with uh, from the engine step we can create a remote engine once it's created you get an authentication key using which you could download the executable and install it on your on the system so that's what i have did and uh, from this snippet you could see that there is a uh, folder created for uh, for remote engine and this remote engine is basically the execution engine or execution environment uh, behind our firewall that would push the data from uh, you know staging area uh, into the our snowflake staging area so once the job has run you could see that the runtime that uh, it has used is a remote engine that we've created it took four minutes and it has transferred the data from our on prem csv files and databases into snowflake stage so on the left hand side you could see the the csv files uh, uh, you know containing sales data personal so person uh, data and uh, you know additional product data and we have mysql database which basically has human resources data so now we have got them into a snowflake staging uh, schema so now let me just quickly you know take you back to a snowflake stage bucket and in the database we could see that this was a staging data data uh, database basically which now hosts uh, uh, tables for us now the next bit is uh, you know once now we have the raw data basically the raw data from csv files into a snowflake stage and to visualize it uh, you know we don't want all of the data for example we have seen that uh, once when we migrated the the google spreadsheet data into snowflake stage there were a few columns which are particular to uh, to to tell in data loader we don't want them when we are visualizing it also we want to visualize aggregated data that you know there are certain columns which you don't want or certain categories of product that you want we don't want null data to be visualized so what we want to have is a schema which has you know accurate and and the data uh, which basically we could trust so this is another talent job because and we want it here we want the we want the analysts we're using size to not spend our time wrangling or playing with 
information that is not clear or not easy so that the, in the bi or in the data mark database they're seeing the transform data they're seeing all the joins the data has been prepared for them so that they can then start to generate insights and not be doing that data manipulation that we talked about at the start of the session that they can get straight to running the reports and that the data is structured in a way that makes sense from a reporting point of view for the business analyst as opposed to you know yeah the raw data we have in the snowflake exactly. database exactly exactly yeah exactly so then this is this is the second uh, job in our plan and what it's doing is it's getting all the raw data which is in staging area and then transforming it and creating you know facts and dimensions tables and putting it into a bi layer or bi schema which again for analysts are basically easy to use and uh, they have directly have access to now summarized data rather than uh, raw data in stage so now since for this particular job the execution environment if you could see is is cloud now because we have the data in our snowflake stage and we are transforming it into a uh, into you know bi uh, schema which is which is again in cloud so we are not going behind our firewall so this time uh, you know we could use talent provided cloud uh, execution environment which is again easy to set up you get it by default and uh, you don't even have to configure it so for example we have seen in the earlier case that we have for executing the job behind the firewall we have to get the remote engine installed in this case we could straight away you know run our job but the job has run now what we have is you know on the right hand side you could see that we have a bi schema which has summarized tables you know clear naming conventions for example you could easily understand that we have customer info and dim customer table then we have a fact sales order table there are no null values you know the data is laid out uh, with, with all the requirements and what we have is basically you know summarized uh, data which we have curated using talent uh, job and picking up from the staging area so now once we have the data it's obviously a good practice to you know just have a report which can you know which, which can tell us how the data migration or the data basically that we have is correct or what kind of discrepancies that might have occurred or exist while we have transferred or uh, you know while we are communicating communicating uh, in different uh, systems and environment so using another talent job in the same plan called validation what uh, we have is two reports on the left hand side we are seeing is the total number of rows columns and type of the files that you know the job has picked up and on the right hand side it it's showing us the tables that it has created and the rows and columns so you could see that our data looks uh, consistent as uh, you know we have same number of rows that were in our uh, on prem uh, sales order uh, details a csv file and the same is there in sales order detail table so since our uh, aggregation report looks okay uh, sorry this this is basically the the validation job which which basically creating this count and creating a table into the destination now once we have the data uh, for us to visualize we can then go back to a sizens dashboard and uh, before the this webinar i created uh, the same visualization or a sales report using the uh, that we had uh, in a staging area and we could see that now once we have the data we could visualize it or you know basically drill down as to how we are performing so now the data that we have is not only just about products but you know products regions as to how many individuals are from which regions or which countries are buying it what are the trends what are the revenues not only that we could then uh, you know uh, you know calculate something like top performing products top performing stores and salesmen and just to show you uh, as to how we uh, got this data uh, to uh, analyze so before that before this webinar the same uh, using the same method uh, i showed you earlier that's the uh, basically 
elastic cube which is powering the uh, dashboard that we have seen so you can see that that this fact sales order table is in center and it is basically you know being uh, coupled by this dimensions table so and uh, you know basically not only that uh, if you could see that i have also created a dimension table so in in size and elastic cube uh, we could also mesh you know data and we could also create custom tables so it's not necessary that we have to create a you know a, a complete data journey to have a basically summarized or transformed table into snowflake before uh, we could you know analyze or visualize our data so i'll go back to my slide and basically that's what we have uh, seen you know that's the uh, elastic cube that uh, that is powering this dashboard and so i think that summarizes uh, that summarizes the story uh, for today that you know we started with uh, google sheets uh, in uh, and then using talent stitch we got the data into snowflake stage and visualize the raw data first and then gradually using uh, you know talent jobs and cloud and with the help of cloud engines and and the, and, the, and the remote bit we could start getting the data which are behind our firewall we could move that into a snowflake and then create you know a transform data and then consume it as per needs and size sense so i think uh, I think Karen, that's that's from my side. And nice idea. And um, yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, so again, I think what we've shown there is a is how easy it is for us to quickly ingest data, whether it's on premise or in the cloud, into a staging database. How we can then transform that data into your data mart into and whatever level you know organizations depending on the scale of organization, the amount of data. They may have a staging database, a landing database, an initial data warehouse, and a data mart. You know, whatever life cycle you are on, on your analytics journey, Talend and Snowflake, we can support you for that. And also then you can see how easy it is to visualize and come up with the answers and the insights in SciSense. So a really joined up solution. So from Talend to Snowflake to SciSense, that can help you in your move to the cloud. If it's just a case of moving on-premise databases to you know, Azure or AWS instances, yes, Talon's perfect for that. If you're going on your data warehousing journey, you know, Snowflake, ideal database for data warehousing, the data of course, data warehouse for the, lit, for the cloud. And then when it comes to analytics and grid generating insights, SciSense is, is, is a, a, an excellent high performance solution. Great products we've shown you this morning. So why would why would you work with IMGS? Well, with IMGS, as you can see, we can provide a complete end-to-end -end solution to complete your journey to the cloud. We also provide frontline support on all of our platform. So we are and then, and then with second line support from Snowflake, Talent, and SciSense. And we have proven expertise in data migration. So we've done a number of major products where we've ensured no loss of data and migrated data. We've been doing that for over a decade now. And our services team will make sure at where you are on your journey to the cloud that we can meet your budget and meet your deadlines. And um, if, if you're interested in everything we, we've shown you this morning, we have our data intelligence event. Well, all being well, we're going to have our data intelligence event in, uh, in size and it was showing this whole platform in the Morrison Hotel on the 22nd of September today, on the 22nd of September. Um, it's going to have a nice lunch, free to attend. We're going to be showing some of the latest technologies, some of the stuff coming from, from these vendors, uh, from the SciSense when it comes to AI, uh, predictive forecasting, and not use of knowledge graph, and, and, and some of the tools that are coming down the line with SciSense was excellent. Talent again, really gushing after Talent's conference yesterday, which was uh, showed our new data and inventory product, which is, you know, does data quality and data scoring, which is really, really important. And also Snowflake, as I said, just really start are changing the market. And this whole piece now with the data marketplace is, is such a clever idea. It's, I mean, just means, again, cutting down that time to insight and being able to generate information. Now, I think we're slightly overrunning. Um, 
So I'm just going to summarize. With Talent Cloud, we can rapidly migrate and integrate your data no matter where it resides. With Snowflake, we have the most performing cloud data warehouse in the market, and SciSense can mash up and visualize your data from any location. Um, I'm not sure if we have time for questions, but Tanya, uh, Garrett, is there anything quick that we need to cover, or uh, um, will we let everybody go? No, I think we're I think we're good. Um, if people have questions, that they can contact yourself or Gareth or any of the team after this, and we will be following up with emails and uh, links to the content from today as well. Definitely. Yeah, so we'll be providing the slide deck for everybody. And if you are interested, there's a good good crowd this morning. If you have questions or would like to have a more uh, personal conversation, you know, reach out to myself or Gareth or Tanya and we'll be happy to do it. Um, so, yeah, I'd just like to thank Aditya for doing all the, the heavy lifts on this morning. Uh, Gareth and Tanya and Ellen in the background are keeping everything going and letting you guys know about these events. And thank you all for coming. I hope you all stay safe and hopefully we'll see you all face to face sometime soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.